This video is going to be on the map viewer and the page that you see right now is the map viewer home. A lot of information on here but what we're going to do is start out by doing a search and what we can do is we can go up here to this drop down menu and we can select a group or an organism uh, what we're going to do is select Homo sapiens, but if you scroll through this whole list, you can tell that there are hundreds of different species that you can choose from. So we're going to click on Homo sapiens here, and I thought we'd look for the cystic fibrosis gene today as our example. So I just hit return, but you can also click go. So what happens after you click go is that you'll see this page. And what it does is it indicates where the CFTR gene is found. And these red lines indicate that it would be on chromosome 7. And there's some association on chromosome 20 and 21 also. The main one is on chromosome 7, so we're going to concentrate on that one. So this is just an overview of all the chromosomes and where the gene is found. So if, you, if we just take a look at the first list of information here, there's 837 hits, uh, and it'll tell you that it's on chromosome 7 in this particular list of information and this is a reference assembly. So if we go over here and click on a map element we that would pull up we'll just go ahead and click on it so you can see what it'll give you. It'll take a bit. So this gives you that particular map element and all the ones, this is the one that we clicked on, and it will also give you all the other sequences. You see these are accession numbers for sequences. It will give you all the other uh, sequences that are nearby. And it will give you, if you click on hits, it will give you blast hits. It will give you the, the length of this particular sequence, the aligned bases, percent identity, percent coverage, and the alignment length ratio. So that's if you just click on one of those accession numbers. Now if we go back to the previous page, 837 hits is a lot. So if you go over here to the to the quick filter, you can select just gene and then if you click on filter, it will reload the page and it'll just give you the genes. And you'll see here you're going to have, in this case, you have a reference gene and then you have a primary assembly gene. So if we click on the reference gene over here, that'll take us to a new page and it'll give us information on CFTR. And it's, it's loading still in the process. More information to come and here it is. So here highlighted in pink is the CFTR gene and if you look over here on the left it also gives you CFTR I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see surrounded by other elements on this uh, stretch of chromosome. So this is depicting the chromosome. These are accession numbers for different elements on that chromosome and if we click on one it'll give us more information. Um, but first I just want to go over what the what you can find specific specifically for CFTR from this uh, highlighted region and if you look over here on the right it does give you a brief description of what the gene does or what type of uh, protein it produces 
Um, but if you look at these links, this is OMIM. So if you click on that, it's going to take you to the, the Mendelian information. And we looked at this a little bit before. So here again, click on these, you'll get all of the, the gene mapping information, the function information, a bunch of uh, references, and uh, the animal models that were used to study the gene. If we go back to this page, the HGNC is the Hugo Gene Nomenclature Committee page. And this is another page that will give you more gene information. Again, it gives you the, what its symbol is. It gives you the approved name. It gives you an ID number and uh, I think something that can be useful. And it's not just in the HGNC, but other ba databases have this also. It gives you other names and symbols that are used for the same gene. So that can be helpful if you're looking at literature and uh, they use different name nomenclature. Um, also, again, it gives you chromosome location, gene family, and also external links, which are down here. So that's another source of information from the map viewer. And then if you click on SV, that's the sequence viewer and this takes you back to the the gene page which is what we saw in, in the earlier video on entrees and it'll show you the sequence after it loads here so this should look familiar this is the the primary assembly view and you have the capability of zooming in and zooming out up here looking for a specific sequence uh, switching on or off different tracks so that should look very similar and you can uh, it, you can see which way the gene is transcribed and you can see um, the the other alignments like the refs the ref seek alignments if you have those in there you can see the the scaffolding chromosome that it came from and down here in this line these are all STS markers so that's very helpful it gives you a visual of everything if you click on PR that will give you protein information about the the protein that is translated from the gene and there's CFTR there's a lot of them so there's many, many mutations also in this gene. And if we go back again, the next one is DL. And this is your access to actually downloading the sequence. And in this case, we're looking at the, the contig. And this is the accession number of the contig. And it, you can either display the sequence or you can save it to a disk. And it gives you, again, it gives you the, the chromosome number and it gives you the base pair number of the stretch of sequence. And that's very similar to what we saw in the, the Entrees overview also. HM links you to homologene. And this identifies homologous genes. So here you can see we have uh, Homo sapiens at the top. We have monkeys down through here, several. There's a cow, mouse, rat. So there, there are several here. And it, it shows you the gene homologies, and it also shows you the protein homologies. And it actually it's a nice visual of how the actual protein sequences line up. And these are uh, exon regions, and, and most likely, uh, protein functional regions too. And one other link here is STS and this will take you to a probe page 
So in, in this page you can get information on probes that you can use to identify the CFTR gene. So there's a whole list here. There's over a thousand for this particular gene. And the last link that I wanted to show you is the SNP, gene, the SNP page. And this will take you to the, the SNP database and it gives you a, a little bit more information too. It'll give you mRNA sequences, it'll give you protein sequences if you click on these links to the accession numbers. And the the thing that's helpful for the SNPs here is that these are SNPs in that particular genomic region. So it'll give you the chromosome position, it'll give you the mRNA position, it'll give you the RS number for any one particular SNP, and it'll identify several other things like heterozygosity, what kind of validation there is, and for this one, there's clinical significance. And some of these, as you can see, are pathogenic, likely pathogenic. Some are untested. And it will also give you a function. And some of these are referenced as missense. Um, and then some down here, you can see in a different color, which is nice. Some are synonymous. And then it will actually give you the the SNP allele and the protein residue that it corresponds to and it also gives codon position, amino acid position and some of them give you uh, PubMed references also. So this table is very helpful especially if you're if you want to find um, specific types of SNPs like this one here it causes a frame shift so if you're looking for something specific, the, the color coding helps a lot. So that's all of the links over here on the right. And if we click on the CFTR itself, the name of the gene, that will take us to another page. After we load here, and here we are back at the gene page. So with the, if you remember from the previous video, we kind of came at entrees from the, in that overview, and we looked at a gene, the gene page. But what I wanted to point out from here is that you can also access, should be able to access, um, oh, there it is, it loaded. It's a little bit slow to load. But you can also access the map viewer from the gene page. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, it needs to load here completely. Uh-oh, we lost it. Let's see if we can go back. Okay, here we are back here. I'm going to let it load this time. I think I was too quick to click on that and it wasn't quite loaded completely. It's a lot of information to load so it takes a little while. And you can see all the related information that it loads. Okay, taking a little bit longer than what I anticipated. All right, well, anyway, I think this has taken a bit too long. The only thing that I wanted to point out is that if you click on Map Viewer here, it will take you to the Map Viewer page and it'll be specifically for this gene that we're looking for. So it's just a way to integrate 
the two different databases. And here we go. It's finally loaded. So you can see there's a lot less information on this map viewer page because it's just showing CFTR. Okay, so I hope this has helped in uh, giving you an overview for the map viewer.